Welcome to the Gospel Activist Podcast, in association with Stepping Out Ministries, where we explore how we proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ in our modern context. Here is your host, pastor and evangelist, Kevin Henry. Hi, this is Pastor Kevin, and welcome back to the Gospel Activist Podcast. On the podcast today, we're looking at the doctrine of hamartiology. And as I said at the end of last podcast, it has nothing to do with ham or hammers. It actually has to do with the topic of sin. But before we look at that topic today, I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell so you'll be made aware of when each video is uploaded to our YouTube channel. Also, you can sign up for our newsletter at the bottom of our website at steppingoutministries.com. There's a link in the description down below as well. And by signing up for our newsletter, you'll be notified that way as well as when each video is uploaded, as well as what is going on with the ministry, such as right now, currently I'm working on a book regarding what is the gospel and what we must be communicated in order to clearly present the gospel. I'm done writing the book now and working on the editing phases of this book, and that book will be released on Kindle. And so you can come to our website to be notified as to when that book is available on Kindle. Well, today, again, we're looking at the topic of hamartiology, that is the doctrine of sin. And hamartiology is referred to as the study of sin. And where we go for that? Well, we have to go to the Bible to understand sin, where it comes from and its effects upon us. There's four points I want to share with you this morning about hamartiology and sin and its effects on us. And the first point is this, that Adam and Eve committed the original sin. We always have to go back to God's word about sin because that's where we find out and understand how sin came into the world and its effect on us. And in this first point, Adam and Eve is the starting point of sin. Where Eve, as we see in Genesis 3, where she listened to the serpent who said, Oh, didn't God not say that you you should not eat of this tree? But it looked good to the eyes. I invite you to go to Genesis chapter 3 and read that passage um, even after you're done re- listening to this podcast or even stopping and pausing now and reading it. It's important to understand that sin came from when Eve was tempted and listened to the serpent and ate of the one tree that God told them not to. God only gave Adam and Eve one commandment. One command, and that was not to eat from that one tree. And Adam and Eve blew it. That's where original sin began. When Eve disobeyed God and listened to the serpent and took of the tree and ate it and then went to her husband and to Adam and Adam said, oh, it looked good too. He shouldn't have done this, but he wanted to be with his wife too. And he too partook of it. There's so many more things to look at in regards to that whole situation of who did what and what was done wrong. But The main point here is in Genesis 3, we see the beginning of sin. When Adam and Eve first chose to disobey God and listen to a serpent instead. So that's the beginning of sin. Where does sin go from there? Well, that's where comes the second point. That mankind is born into sin. That means we're born sinners. Now, that doesn't mean that we're first born that we're sinning. But it doesn't take long for us as humans to commit a sin of some kind, whether intentional or unintentional, whether we realize we have done sin or not. Either way, we're accountable for our sin, as we'll see in a moment. So we as humans are born into sin. That is, we're born with a propensity to sin. It's part of our our DNA in a way as as humans, that we have this propensity and a lean towards sin. It's because we are selfish. We want our own way. Even those who say that, well, I remember having a conversation with one lady who who sinned by telling a lie. And she thought it was a good thing because she was protecting a woman who was battered by her husband. And and so she lied when the husband asked her, well, where where is she? And she lied and said, I don't know. And the fact is, she didn't have to lie. She could have said, I'm not going to tell you. Her, Her choice to lie was not to protect the woman but to protect herself from that husband and understandably so knowing that that husband was abusive to his wife 
probably could be abusive to another woman. And so rightly, she'd want to protect herself. However, she still sinned by a lying. That's the thing about sin. We all have committed sin. God's word tells us we have all sinned. Romans 5 verse 12 says this, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world, and death through sin, so death spread to all men, because all sinned. So we are all born with a propensity to sin, so we're born into sin. And again, it doesn't take very long for us to sin. Even little children at a young age don't have to be taught to sin. They don't even have to be taught how to lie or to steal. It comes naturally because of our own desires. But nonetheless, at, we are born into sin. And that causes us to have separation between us and God. That leads us to the third point, that sin separates us from the relationship with God. In Genesis 1 and 2, we see when Adam and Eve are created, they have a perfect relationship with God because there's no division because of sin. Until Adam and Eve sin, then there's a broken relationship between God and mankind. There's a broken relationship between us and God because of our sin. Again, as we wrote, read moments ago in Romans 5.12, that we are all born into sin. Sin entered the world and has called all of us to sin. Matthew 25.32 also says this, All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them from one another as a sheep separates the sh as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. As God separates the sheep from the goats, the, the believers, the Christians, from the non-believers, the, the sinner, we see that there's a separation too. And there's a separation of those goats for eternity from God. This is one point and one understanding that we have that, that God has a broken relationship with us because of our sin. It's not what God has done. It's what we have done to break the relationship. And God created us to have a perfect and good relationship with him. This leads next to the fourth point. Because sin has separated us from God. There's a consequence with that. And yes, that is part of the consequence of separation between us and God in a relationship. But it goes further than that. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. What are the wages? Death. We all, when we work a job, garner a wage. That wage is something that we deserve. It's, it's something that we've earned. We've earned a paycheck. We've earned money for the job we have done. Or maybe we've made some other kind of agreement where there's exchange of services or goods in another way instead for, for a job we've done. Either way, there is a wage for what we've done. The negative part of that is when it comes to sin. Sin garners us a wage. Something that we deserve for our sin. And as we've just read from Romans 6.23, that that wage is death. What we deserve for our sin is death. Now, we're not just talking about just physical death and being put in, in the grave someday. It goes further and deeper than that. If you look at the Greek word for death in Romans 6.23, it means more than just physical death. It actually means a death of relationship with God. It also means an eternity in hell. It's very important for us to understand that. There are a lot of Christians today who are saying that, no, there's no thing as, such thing as hell. Uh, once you die, if you're not a Christian, that's just the end of you. You, you just cease to exist. That is not true according to God's word. It is very, very clear that hell exists. And that is where we end up if we don't surrender ourselves to Christ. If we don't confess our sins to him and make him Lord of our lives. Placing our faith in him by doing that. God's word is clear that we'll spend an eternity in hell. That's the consequences for our sin. A death, a spiritual death, an eternity in hell. So it's very important for us to understand this because without understanding the consequences of our sin, how do we get to really the good news? And why would someone want to be to receive Christ's forgiveness? Because, well, after all, ah, so what? So what if I had ceased to exist at the end of this life? I've lived a pretty good life. I've enjoyed myself and done what I've wanted. 
but God had to have a consequence for us to make us understand and realize, hey, there's far more written on this than just rather of ceasing to exist or being in heaven. I don't know about you, but I know for me, I want to spend eternity with God in heaven. I don't want to face the consequences of my sin. But yet, if we don't turn to Jesus Christ, we will face that eternity of death and eternity in hell. So that's the study of, of sin. That's homartiology. But the question now then remains is, what is its effect on the gospel and how we communicate the gospel? Well, here's sin's effect on the gospel. Sin has separated mankind from the original state that God wanted us to be holy and in relationship with him. When God created us, he intended us to be holy as he is holy. And as the word tells us too, we are told to be holy as he is holy. But we couldn't do that without Christ's sacrifice on the cross first. So the effect of sin in the gospel, again, is that it keeps us from being holy and in right relationship with God. So then what must we communicate in regards to hermartiology? And again, we don't have to use this term when we share the gospel. We probably shouldn't use the term because it's one of those big high fluting words. Uh, but it's, it's important for us to understand this term and this theology. So there's two things we must communicate to those who are lost when we share the gospel. One is this. Everyone has sinned. There's not one person on this planet who has not sinned. There's no one who has ever lived, is living, or ever will live who hasn't sinned. Everyone has sinned. And we will answer for it someday before God. The second point we must communicate is this. That sin has the consequences of an eternity in hell. That must be communicated when we share the gospel. Because people must understand the consequences of their sin. So they realize the severity of it. That they realize that there's nothing they can do. But it's what Christ has done for them. The doctrine of sin, even though it is a sad and hard thing, is something that we must communicate in order for people to understand what they need to be saved from. People have seen throughout this world signs that say, Jesus saves. Okay, great. But what has Jesus saved us from? Saved us from our sins? Yes. And the consequences of our sin. That we must communicate before we bring about what Jesus has done for us to overcome our sin and to be saved from our sin. I want to thank you again so much for joining me on the podcast today as we have looked at the doctrine of hamartiology and its effect on us and how we share the gospel. As I mentioned earlier in this podcast, I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell and also to sign up for our newsletter at the bottom of our website so you'll be notified when each video goes up as well as what's going on with Stepping Out Ministries. Also, you might be wondering about how can we support the ministry financially as we see that it is beneficial to ourselves in training how to share the gospel. Well, you can support us in two ways. One, you can go to our Patreon page, and there's a link in the description down below, and you can sign up to supporting us monthly. Also, you can support us in another way by sending us an transfer instead. Maybe you just want to do a one-time gift, of which we would definitely appreciate. I must let you know, though, that we are not a charitable status, and so we are not able to give a tax receipt to you. But you will have the knowledge, you will be able to know that you're supporting the work that God has called us to do in sharing the gospel and equipping the church to share the gospel. So if you're thinking that and plan to, to give, then I want to thank you so much. Maybe you're a person who has been supporting us already. I want to thank you so much for supporting the ministry. Next week on the podcast, we're looking at the doctrine of Christology, looking at Jesus and his role in salvation, his role in the gospel and how it affects the gospel message. Of course, that's the most important part of the gospel message is Jesus and what he's done. And we'll be exploring that next week on the podcast. Until next time, this is Pastor Kevin reminding you to preach the gospel to any person, anywhere, anytime, and that's no matter the cost.
You have been listening to the Gospel Activist Podcast in association with Stepping Out Ministries. To submit a comment or question for Pastor Kevin to answer on the podcast, visit us at www.steppingoutministries.com. Thank you for listening, and we invite you to join us for our next podcast.